readings show that star Betelgeuse has gone dark and could be on the verge of going supernova. This is a continuing mystery. Space weather report today. The continuing mystery of Betelgeuse. For months, astronomers have been keeping a wary eye on Betelgeuse, the bright red star in Orion's shoulder. What's attracting their attention? Well, all of a sudden, Betelgeuse is not bright anymore. Its visible luminosity has, quote-unquote, fallen off a cliff. And the astronomers say it's a sign that the star could be on the verge of going supernova. The most recent measurements put the visual magnitude of Betelgeuse at about plus 1.66, the dimmest it's been in our 25-year photometry. This is what Edward Geenan of Villanova University states. Betelgeuse is a highly evolved red supergiant the type of star that could collapse and explode at any moment. Indeed, the dimming of Betelgeuse could be explained if the star has suddenly contracted to about 92% of its previous radius. But that's not the only possibility. Betelgeuse might be dimming and dimmed by a giant star spot, or maybe it's shrouded by an outburst of stardust from its own cool outer layers, or something else entirely no one knows. Maybe something is obstructing in front of it. Now, answers might be forthcoming February 21st. Astronomers have long known that Betelgeuse is a variable star. It pulsates with many periods, as shown in the Fournier analysis, Betelgeuse light curve. It shows a dominant probable pulsation period of about P equals 430 days. And uh, this is what uh, Gideon notes and colleague Richard Watts was, was a tonic in a recent astronomical telegram given this result. The minimum brightness is expected on 21st, uh, plus or minus 7 day, February 2020, 2020, just in a couple of uh, days, and actually 11 days. Now, if Betelgeuse starts to bounce back on February 21st, this whole episode might be just a uh, deeper than average pulsation, and then perhaps the supernova watch can be called off. But as Gunian notes, even if the 430-day period is still working, this would indicate a minimum brightness near 0.9 magnitude, much brighter than the current value of near 1.6 magnitude. So something very unusual is going on. And we have to stay tuned for updates because February 21st is fast approaching. Now, what is a supernova? It's a powerful and luminous stellar explosion, transient astronomical event occurring the last evolutionary stages of a massive star or when a white dwarf is triggered into runaway nuclear fusion. The original object called the progenitor either collapses into a neutron star or a black hole, even, a, yes, a black hole, or is completely destroyed. The peak optical luminosity of supernova can be compared to that of an entire galaxy before fading over several weeks or months. Now, I'm not going to go into the, I'll leave you a link below on Wikipedia because there are various types of supernova, core collapse type 1, type 1b, 1c, failed supernova, light curves, but I want to go into the source of their um, stellar evolution elements, cosmic rays and gravitational waves because there's so much to see here. Um, the uh, energy output. Although supernova are primarily known as luminous events, the electromagnetic radiation they release almost a minor side effect, particularly in the case of core collapse supernova. The emitted electromagnetic radiation is a tiny fraction of the total energy released during the event because they release heavy elements and they have kinetic energy of the ejecta. In the core collapse supernova, the mass majority of the energy is directed into neutrino emissions and while some of this apparently powers the observed destruction, 99% of the neutrinos escape the star in the first few minutes following the start of the collapse. Um, I'm going to go into the, um, where was it? Source of heavy elements, role in stellar evolution, cosmic rays. Supernova remnants are thought to accelerate a large fraction of galactic primary cosmic rays uh, but direct evidence of cosmic rays production has not been found in a small number of remnants. Gamma rays and pion decay have been detected from supernova remnants 
IC443 and W444. These are produced when accelerated protons from a supernova impact on stellar material. Now, the gamma rays are gamma radiation is a penetrating electromagnetic radiation rising from radioactive decay of atomic nuclei and it consists of the shortest wavelengths um, sorry I want to go back to that because I missed it the shortest wavelengths electromagnetic waves and so imparts the highest photon energy um, those are the gamma rays the cosmic rays High energy protons and atomic nuclei which move through space at nearly the speed of light. They originate from the sun, from outside of the solar system, and from distant galaxies, and even, of course, supernova explosions, and from distant galaxies upon, uh, upon impact with the Earth's atmosphere, cosmic rays can produce showers of secondary radiation. We know they're very destructive. And they also have gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are disruptances in the curvature of space-time, by the way, generated by accelerated masses that propagate as waves outward from their source at the speed of light. Now, gravitational waves, supernova, are potentially strong galactic sources of gravitational waves, but none have so far been detected. The only gravitational wave events so far detected are from mergers of black holes and neutron stars, probably remnants of supernova. Now, what effects do the supernova have on our Earth? A near-Earth supernova is a supernova close enough to Earth to have noticeable effects on its biosphere. In other words, the life on Earth. Okay, Biosphere, also known as the ecosphere, is a worldwide sum of all ecosystems, animal and uh, vegetable, and can be termed the zone of life on Earth, a closed system and largely self-regulated. Okay. So, near-Earth supernovas can be a, a, an extinction-level event, obviously. Depending upon the type and energy of the supernova, it could be as far as 3,000 light years away. In 1996, it was theorized that traces of past supernova might be detectable on Earth in the form of metal isotope signatures or rock strata. Iron-60 enrichment was later reported in deep sea rock in the Pacific Ocean. In 2009, elevated levels of nitrate ions were found in Antarctic ice, which coincided with the 1006 and 1054 supernova. Gamma rays from these supernova could have boosted levels of nitrogen oxides, which became trapped in the ice. Type 1a supernova are thought to be potentially the most dangerous if they occurred close enough to Earth, because these supernova arise from dim, common white dwarf stars in binary systems, it's likely that a supernova that can affect the Earth will occur unpredictably and in a, solar, in a star system that is not well studied. The closest known candidate is IK Pegasi. Uh, the recent estimates predict that a type 2 supernova would have to be closer than 8 parsecs, that's 26 light years, to destroy half of the Earth's ozone layer, and there are no such candidates closer at about 500 light years. I'll leave a link below for you for this because there's so much to learn about supernovas. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation 
with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.